But let's go into advanced mode again here now and go through all these various different settings which are available. Steering range is simply just the angle of degrees that the wheel is able to turn. So you can see at the moment, 900 degrees, we're able to rotate the wheel through 900 degrees. If we wind that down, say to 180, now the wheel only turns 180 before it hits that bump stop. Now, bump stop hardness is also an adjustment you have here too. So if we go soft, it's got quite a squishy kind of feel on either side. If we go hard, then it's very, very solid in either direction. I kind of like the medium setting though. Bump stop range allows us to create an offset between the steering range and where the bump stop kicks in. So you can see at the moment, we've got 180 degrees of rotation, but we can actually turn the wheel a little bit past that. If we go even higher on that, you can see now we're able to actually turn it way past the measurement range that's actually outputting to the sim. And if we undershoot, so if we set a negative value, then what it's gonna do is limit that movement before we actually reach the steering range. I don't really see why anybody would wanna do that, but I'm sure there'll be some usage case that somebody will let me know in the comments. Now, one thing I did notice is if you wind this right down to below the steering range, then it actually goes crazy and it just doesn't do anything. So you wanna make sure that you keep that within a reasonable range. I think if we crank that up to say 1440 and then crank that down, that'll probably, yeah, there you go. That's actually working properly now, so that's fine. So we'll go back up. And that is one important thing that I know a lot of people that are doing truck sims will be wondering about. You can go up to 1440 degrees of rotation with this wheel, which I know people will be happy about. So then we have a high frequency limit. So if you're getting a lot of high frequency noise in your force feedback, you can set a frequency limit here to allow it to cut anything above that frequency. So before we go any further here, I'm just gonna switch this back to my Assetto Corsa Competizione preset here so that will give you a better idea of the kind of settings that I'm using. So for damping, this is basically simulating the sensation of the steering wheel being connected to a mechanical system inside the car. So the steering rack, the tires, the friction point of the tires on the road and so forth. So depending again on the game that you're playing, some of these simulate that in the force feedback settings themselves. So you don't need to run a very high value here. But one of the themes that you'll see when we get into driving later on is I found with the force feedback on this wheelbase, we weren't having to use a lot of filtering to sort of iron out little kinks and glitches in the force feedback like we have to with a lot of other wheelbases that we've tested in the past. So generally speaking, you'll see me running lower filter settings here than you might have in a lot of other wheelbases that we reviewed in the past. And that's the reason why. So that's our damping. We then got a setting for friction here as well. That gives a additional sensation of weight in the steering wheel, a setting for inertia that will give us the sensation of the wheel sort of trying to continue to turn once we've kind of mechanically stopped moving it in any direction. So again, these things just give us that added sensation of the wheel being mechanically connected to something physical inside the car. So then corner force assist. This allows us to reduce the strength of the force feedback mid corner so that we're not being overwhelmed with, uh, with strength in the wheelbase. If you were to turn down the overall strength of the wheelbase, then that's obviously going to attenuate our weaker signals like, uh, like detail in the road rumble strips and things like that. So what that allows us to do is attenuate the force of the wheel fighting against us mid corner without attenuating those other effects. And it is something that we see on most other direct drive wheelbases as well. Now we have an adjustment here for our overall force. That's what we were referencing just before. So this is the maximum amount of force that the wheel is ever gonna output. Now you'll notice here that I only have this set to 13 newton meters. This will vary depending on the type of car that I'm driving. You can wind it on the Invicta base all the way up to 27 newton meters. Honestly, I can't imagine anybody ever needing that much strength. But what it does give you is the advantage of additional dynamic range. So what you might wanna do is crank this up a little bit further and that will allow you to run things like your road textures, things like that a lot higher than you might want otherwise. And then you can increase your cornering force adjustment, for example, so that you don't have the overwhelmingly strong force feedback in corners, but you're still getting really powerful road effects. So again, it's purely a personal preference thing. The more dynamic range you have available, the more you can use. But honestly, guys, I don't see too many scenarios where we're gonna be wanting to run a lot more than what I have it set to here. And we're gonna unpack this a little bit more in our Forte wheelbase review too. So definitely subscribe so you don't miss out on that. We'll talk a lot about the comparison between the Invicta and the Forte and whether you actually need the additional torque that's present in the Invicta wheelbase. And obviously that will become apparent when we do our driving tests later on too. Torque behavior prediction, this is like an interpolation filter. So again, there's a tooltip here that explains exactly what it does. But basically what it's doing is just filtering the force feedback signal coming out of the game. So if you've got a game that feels very robotic, very notchy, then adding more filter here allows it to sort of interpolate and smoothen things out. Now, obviously the more you smooth things out, the more numb the wheel is gonna feel overall. So you generally wanna run this on the lower side. Uh, for a set of course of competition, 
to Siono, I ended up running it on one for iRacing, I actually didn't need to run it at all. And that was purely just a personal preference thing. I do find that, for example, a set of Corsa Competizione can feel a little bit grainy without any filtering with those higher frequency force feedback signals that it outputs these days. So a set of Corsa Competizione runs at 400 hertz sample rate for the force feedback, whereas uh, iRacing only runs at 60 hertz. So that explains the difference there. Now we have the torque acceleration limit. Now I'm not sure why that's defaulted back down to 0.1. I actually run that at 9.5. So this is the slew rate or the response time of the motor. So in basic terms, the higher you have this set, the more snappy and responsive the wheel is gonna feel. So on the Invicta base, this winds all the way up to 9.5, which is around about the same as what it is on the SimuCube 2 Ultimate for reference. Although from what I understand, the way Asiatek SimSports measure this is a little bit different from how SimuCube did. And admittedly, this does actually feel a little bit more responsive, a little bit more snappy than my SimuCube 2 Ultimate does, which is pretty darn impressive. So there were a couple of cars that I drove, uh, F3s, Formula One, for example, where I did actually end up winding this down because it was just too snappy and it started to feel a little bit unrealistic. But for anything from GT3 cars and slower, you're probably gonna to wanna to leave this cranked up and we'll talk about the reasons for that and what it feels like in the actual driving experience a little bit later on. So then lastly, we have our anti-oscillation setting. Pretty self-explanatory here. If the wheel is oscillating a lot when you're driving down a straight, for example, you're just feeling that it's fighting against you all the time when you're trying to drive straight and just giving you effects that aren't really, uh, you know, aren't really beneficial to driving or detrimental to driving, then you can increase this value and it will do its best to filter those out. So again, you can play around with this to your own personal preference and it will change depending on the sim that you're driving in. So it's as simple as that. Once you're done, you just click on save to wheelbase and that will flash the settings to the base. It did actually make the changes in real time as we were making adjustments here, but it does still have that save to wheelbase. So I'm not sure exactly what the reason for that is.